Every year during the holidays, I can guarantee that all of you will see Santa Claus with the Coke in his hands. Whether he's on a billboard, a poster, magazine, or commercial, Santa Claus and Coke always make sure to have a huge presence during Christmas time. The full story between Father Christmas and Coke is fascinating. Some have assumed that Santa wears red because of Coke, and some even think that Coca-Cola invented Santa Claus. While those rumors are false, there is no doubt that Coke shaped the modern image of Santa Claus into what we know him as today, and have commercialized him like no other brand has done before. And today, I'm covering the full story between Coke and Santa, from the origins of Santa himself to how one Coca-Cola artist completely transformed Santa into what he is today. To understand how Coke and Santa became such a huge part of the holidays, we need to know where Santa Claus came from in the first place, which takes us back over 2,000 years to the 4th century. During this time, this is what Santa Claus looked like. While obviously lacking all the key features of our version of Santa, these religious depictions of Santa all had the same role as him giving out presents. The first story of Santa involved a 4th century Greek hero named Saint Nicholas, a Turkish bishop that gave secret gifts to the poor and did other good deeds like saving single women from being prostitutes. Over centuries, the image of Santa transformed drastically, but it wasn't until the 1860s that our version of Santa started appearing in history. All thanks to two people, Clement Moore and Thomas Nast. First, we have Clement Moore. Clement was a poet from New York City who wrote the world-famous Twas the Night Before Christmas poem. In the poem, he describes Santa as a chubby, jolly old elf with a white beard and dressed in all fur. Sound familiar? However, our standard view of Santa wouldn't start to take form until the late 1860s, when Thomas Nast, a Civil War cartoonist, started drawing his depiction of Father Christmas. He was known for creating political cartoons for a newspaper called Harper's Weekly. In these cartoons, he would consistently include his depiction of Santa based on Clement's poem. His most famous and well-known cartoon he drew of Santa was this one called Merry Old Santa Claus. And out of every single Santa Claus picture out there, this one resonated with people the most and brands took note of it. Surprisingly, Coca-Cola wasn't the first brand to use Santa in their ads. The first trace of Santa in any form of advertising dates back to 1868, when the US confection company used him in an ad for sugar plums. Then in 1885, he appeared in an ad for ivory soap. But the most notable use of Santa came in 1915, when a company called White Rock Beverages became the first drink brand to use him in advertising. And it would be these ads from White Rock that would inspire Coca-Cola to use Santa in their ads. The question is, how did Coca-Cola become the one brand to be so intertwined with Santa? To find the answer, we need to take a look at Coke during the chilly winters of the 1930s. At the time, Coke was facing a major issue during the holiday season. What was that issue? Well, they couldn't sell Coke during the winter. Coke was only known for being a summer beverage, so when the holidays arrived, their sales slumped drastically because a cold Coke didn't seem appetizing to consumers during the winter. So, how were they going to convince people to drink soda during the holidays? The answer? Santa Claus. In 1931, Coke's advertising executive set out to find an artist that could create a wholesome, lovable, and symbolic image of Santa for their ads. And he struck gold on his search when he discovered Haddon Sunbloom, a talented artist who would eventually transform the image of Santa into what we know him as today. Coca-Cola paid Haddon $1,000 to create an oil painting of Santa for Coke to use in their ads. He took inspiration from Thomas Nass cartoons and created this painting of him titled My Hats Off. He had perfectly captured everything Coke wanted for their Santa. The twinkling eyes, the rosy cheeks, the round belly, and the merry grin were spot on. He came off as warm, gentle, friendly, and cheerful. All traits that Coca-Cola's brand stood for. Needless to say, Coke loved Hat and Santa. Coke took Hat and Santa and used it in a magazine ad in 1931. And Coke didn't know it at the time, but this one advertisement would not only change the modern image of Santa, but would forever intertwine Coca-Cola with Santa Claus. Readers of the magazine absolutely adored Hat and Santa, and as a result, Coke actually saw an increase in their winter sales. So, for the next 33 winters, Coke continuously paid Haddon to make Santa Claus ads during the holiday season. Using his neighbor and himself as a model, Haddon would paint his version of Santa in many different fun situations, like delivering toys, greeting children that stayed up to meet him, and raiding refrigerators at numerous homes. Santa was also seen holding bottles of Coke, drinking Coke, and receiving Coke as gifts. Coca-Cola's winter sales continued to skyrocket. But at the same time, they were completely changing American culture. Coke's magazine ads, billboards, and store displays were, for many Americans, their primary exposure to the modern image of Santa Claus. Sunbloom's paintings fiercely captured the public's imagination, 
And as a result, millions of Americans started to associate Haddon's paintings with what they thought Santa should look like. And sure enough, everyone started to agree that Santa was a jolly, fat, and red suit wearing guy who gave out presents. And of course, loved to drink Coke. The cultural impact of Haddon's paintings was so big that Santa developed a fan base of observant fans. For example, they noticed the time when Santa's belt buckle was strapped in the wrong direction and also the time that Santa was missing his wedding ring from Mrs. Claus. Children even started to leave out Coke at night on Christmas Eve, all because of Haddon's ads. Haddon would create his final version of Santa Claus in 1964. But our story doesn't end there. Coca-Cola continued to create Santa ads in the same exact style as Haddon, but just with different artists. And because of this decades-long tradition of using Santa in their Christmas commercials, Coke continued to cement the idea that they were a necessity during the holidays. Many brands still use Coke's depiction of Santa in their ads to this day, and it's no doubt that Coke completely changed the way we feel about Christmas. While Coke didn't invent Santa, it is certain that Coca-Cola not only changed the image of Santa Claus forever, but commercialized them in a way no other brand has ever done before.